Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you are waking up in the same place every single day and it seems like every day is the exact same thing and it never gets any better? Oh, well, I mean, I guess we're all kind of going through that right now. But this movie is actually a really fun version of that idea. So, I'm Corey Baker, and this is Palm Springs. So, Palm Springs stars Andy Samberg and Kristen Meliotti uh, as two members of a wedding party uh, who are having sort of like a will-they-won't-they they thing going on for a little while, and then they sneak off from the wedding, and we find this cave... Uh, and Andy Samberg is pleading with her, don't go in the cave, don't go in the cave, don't go in the cave. But she follows him into the cave, and following that, uh, she joins him in an infinite time loop that he is stuck in, uh, where they relive the same exact day over and over and over again. So it's the day of, his, of her sister's wedding for eternity until they can figure it out. So I've seen a lot of reviews about Palm Springs and a lot of people talking about it recently because it was... Uh, this big Sundance hit. And I, I feel like that we haven't properly, as sort of as like the uh, film community, or more so the aspiring film community, hasn't really latched onto this as sort of like that dream type of project like other big, huge successes out of Sundance have been before. Uh, this one set the record for largest purchase ever out of Sundance uh, 17,500,069, beating uh, Birth of a Nation by said 69 cents but at its base it's a pretty low budget comedy it's only five million dollars and considering that it's so low you 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 would think that you know like they're sort of struggling to make things happen but they they really have done a great job of maximizing everything that they could out of the budget any special effects are well done but not over the top they're very sparingly used and uh on top of that it, it it's just clear that they had a plan going in where it's minimal locations. A lot of these locations, too, probably got doubled up uh, for a couple different spots. And it allows you to spend your budget on crew, on equipment, on all the things that allow you to make uh, something that is uh, smaller in scope look grander when it's all put together. And I mean, having Andy Samberg not only be the star of this thing, but the producer probably also saved them a bit of money because he probably took scale just to <laughs> keep the budget down and be able to allocate the money elsewhere. And he got it back, obviously, when this thing got sold. But it's just amazing because, like, when I was coming up, when a lot of film fans were sort of following how things were going in the 90s and the early 2000s, it was all about... Let's make the best movie we possibly can. Let's get it to Sundance. It'll be a huge success, and it'll sell for a ton of money. And I don't know if it's sort of the lottery ticket aspect of that whole proposition, which is sort of weighing down on people over the years, but this is, more than most, a great example of how this sort of thing can actually happen and how it works and what is needed to make a movie like this successful. And I mean, like, coming up, Myself, like the the people who came before, the Quentin Tarantinos, the Robert Rodriguez's, the Kevin Smiths, people who came to Sundance with a movie or came to a big film festival, a la Sundance with a movie, and sold it and became the hot property that they were from that point going forward. It's just not a conversation that seems to happen anymore. But this one in particular, I just think is particularly good because not only did it have the Little Miss Sunshine, the Brooklyn, the Reservoir Dogs, the 500 Days of Summer Sundance event where it was the, the cream of the crop. But in addition, it has taken uh, specifically more so, I think, the actors than sort of the director writer, director writer side of it and have catapulted them tremendously. Uh, in prior years, if a movie like this was coming out at Sundance, and maybe because this was a weirder Sundance than usual, it doesn't have the same sort of thing going on, but, you know, like, the we would be talking a lot about the writing and directing team, I think, in other years, and I think that's kind of sad that it's sort of fallen off a little bit in that regard. I don't want to make it sound like I'm criticizing the writing or directing at all in this, by the way. I think everything in this movie was done uh, pitch perfect for what they were trying to accomplish, and Max Barbakov and uh, Andy Sierra, apologize if I mispronounced any names, the director and writer of this movie, uh, respectfully, 
they met at AFI. They worked on a short film at AFI together. They realized that they had this sort of connection. And they were able to take a project that they were working on together and sell it to Lonely Island Productions, Andy Sandberg's production company. And they were given the autonomy to make the movie that they wanted to make. Obviously, there were you know, rewrites and things that were done in produ production to make it the best possible version of the movie it could be. But, you know, the, the experience from their side sounds like the type of thing that a lot of people who go to a film school like AFI want. They want to be able to say, I've met a creative partner. I met somebody who will help me uh, get to the places that I need to be because not no one can do it all by themselves. And I, I, I it, again, it feels like the heist or the film school friends who make a movie and it's a huge Sunday and success is usually talked about a lot more than it is in this particular movie. But I, I think both of them did uh, tremendous jobs and I'm, I'm looking forward to what they have in the future. To me though, this one is different in a way because I, I feel like there's been a lot more heat generated from the actors involved. So obviously from Andy Samberg's perspective, uh, this is him taking his own shots, doing what he needs to do to be able to move his own career forward. And it, it, it should be, if you're an actor listening to this right now, you should take the lessons from what Andy Samberg has done and apply it to your own success going forward. Obviously, Andy Samberg and uh, the Lonely Island, his group, uh, his writing <laughs> compatriots have been at this for a long time and they've always just hustled real hard to get the next thing that comes along whether it was doing like award shows or going into SNL or then doing their own movies you know Andy Samberg specifically with Brooklyn Nine-Nine too which has been a huge hit uh, all, all of these things are helping build a sort of broad uh, viewership for the things that they do and you got to think about it like this so it's not necessarily about being in one really great thing and then everyone's going to know who you are. Brooklyn Nine-Nine, from everything anyone's ever told me, is a really great show and Andy Samberg's really great in it himself, but I haven't seen it. It's just not the thing that, that you know made me go, I have to watch this. And uh, the same thing with uh, uh, Kristen Milioti's uh, career. Like, you know, she was the mom in How I Met Your Mother. This is a big, huge role that gets a lot of attention. But, you know, it's not necessarily the attention of everybody who, who is out there in the world because the viewership of Brooklyn Nine-Nine or How I Met Your Mother is, you know, specific swaths of the country. So if you think about it in terms of how can you maximize your general awareness to an audience who might not necessarily know you and diversifying the type of things that you do is a great way to do that. I mean, at the end, for Andy Samberg's perspective, it, he is doing great because he took a low-risk investment. A $5 million budget on this movie is not very expensive at all if you consider it compared to other movies. And I imagine that he, in his mind, said to himself, I can at least get $5 million back on this somehow. Whether or not it is independently released or it is sold to a streamer or it is done... Like, even if you didn't imagine that everything was going to go right in the way that allowed you to become the biggest selling film in the history of Sundance, you, you still had to imagine that you had enough things going on with this project that you were going to be able to turn it into a positive in the end because it wasn't going to lose money at just a $5 million budget. And I'll tell you, I, I mean, like, I, I, I don't know if... Andy Samberg is the type of actor that I generally seek out projects from. I think he was really good in this. I, I'm very aware of him, which is a problem sometimes I have with actors, and it's not anything against his talent or his ability. I think he's very talented. Uh, you know, good-looking guy. <laughs> like has a lot going for him. Uh, I, I, the intersection of me and him just never really happened before, but I think this movie is really good, and I think that there is a really amazing Andy Samberg performance somewhere in the future. I just feel like this one felt too much like who I imagine Andy Samberg is in my own mind, which, fair or unfair, it, it's it's just sort of like, it felt like I was just watching, you know, like, there sometimes there's movies you watch where uh, the star is uh, just playing a real-life version of themselves in some sort of way. 
it, it sort of felt like we were experiencing that with, with Palm Springs a little bit. And it could be very far off from the truth, and it could just be tremendous acting, which is carrying him. But again, I've not been with every step of Andy Samberg's career, so I don't know. It's it, it's tough. But movies like this that send you out to new audiences or new people who get to see you is the opportunity that you get to prove to these people you are more than just the thing that they think you are. And in that respect, Andy Samberg did a tremendous job. And, you know, the, it, everything he did was exactly what needed to be done for this movie. It, it was it was, it was, was very well played. I think more to that point, uh, Kristen Milioti's uh, role as his love interest in this movie does more in that regard. So... I had definitely seen her in a lot of things, but didn't necessarily put into my mind that it was the same person. So, for instance, uh, I hadn't seen like all the credits she was in. Obviously, I never saw How I Met Your Mother, so I was unaware of that. But she was, uh, and she had a guest spot in Thirty Rock that I really enjoyed. I remember uh, after I looked up the credit, <laughs> looked up her credits, and saw what she did. I was just like, oh yeah, that one. I remember that. She did a, a guest spot on The Good Wife that I remember seeing. Like, it, I, I remember seeing her, and I remember her being talented. And in the back of my mind somewhere, I'm sure I pushed away, like, remember this girl, I'm sure she's going to be good. And just, it's one of those things that, like, you know, for, if I was, uh, you know, watching The Good Wife and watching 30 Rock, and then I go see How I Met Your Mother, then that just explodes my opinion of her. Uh, but because I had sort of this break between you know, her more well-known parts in this, like, you know, for instance, she was in Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, she was playing uh, Jordan's wife at the beginning of it. And I, you know, I, I casually remember her being in that movie. I don't quite remember all the beats of Wolf of Wall Street right at this moment, but I seem to remember, I don't remember anyone being bad in that movie. There not being any bad performances. But sometimes when you're also cast against somebody like Leo, who's just putting in yeoman's work, then it can be hard to to be remembered as well in that case. And honestly, she's the one putting in the yeoman's work in this one. She puts on an amazing performance in this movie. Right now, I am buying literally all the Kristen Milioti stock I can get. Uh, if, if she was a company, a publicly traded company, I would want to be buying as much as humanly possible. It, she has EGOT written all over her. Uh, for those people who don't know, EGOT is if you win an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. She has already been, I believe, nominated or won either a, a Tony or a Grammy. So she has that going for her. I'm not lying. I think that it, it so far this year, this has been my favorite performance from a actress in a in a, a movie and I mean obviously it was a very unusual and different year but I, I, from where I stand at this moment I, I, I couldn't imagine I would be very upset if she did not get nominated for best actress when the Oscars come around if we're playing by the rules that we assume we're playing by which is going through 2020 all that being said I, I like to go back to this beginning point with the like take your own shots and diversify your audience and do everything you can it's better to make a movie that has, or a TV show or something like that, that will have a diehard, committed audience, even if it's a smaller audience, and do more projects like this that sort of spread out across different people, trying to figure out the Venn diagram that connects different people and different audiences so that their awareness of you, whether or not you're a writer or a director or an actor or an actress, expands from that point. And perhaps just... The way that the the news shakes on this one, it, it's not uh, Max Barbakov's or uh, or Andy Sierra's like big rise into prominence, but I imagine that they're going to be hired a lot more and they're going to have a lot more shots based off of the fact that they got this one successful. And it's sad that it's not going to be like the Kevin Smith, the Quentin Tarantino, the Robert Rodriguez thing that's going on uh, or that had gone on. But really think about this, like. When I was first picking up cameras, when I was first trying to make movies, I was thinking about how I could be the next Tarantino, the next Kevin Smith, the next Rodrigo, the, the, go on the line, of somebody who goes to a film festival with a hot property and just blows everybody away. And that happened in this movie. And it's not being 
seen as the same as you know how Reservoir Dogs took over Sundance when it it went up. And I'm not saying that this movie is Reservoir Dogs or that it's Little Miss Sunshine or that it's any of the other movies that I've sort of talked about here. It's just that, you know, in any given year, whatever the most talked about movie at Sundance is usually gets a lot of money. And that's not necessarily, you know, it's just like you can't compare one year's Academy Awards to another because it's two different times and places and, you know, competition and movie, you know, like a, a movie like Crash doesn't necessarily line up with, you know, it wouldn't necessarily get nominated in other years, but it won in the year that it was that it was in. And you can't control how things happen like that, and just like you can't control how things ended up going in this year. So you buy this property, you think that you're going to have yourself a limited uh, theatrical run, and then it's going to go on Hulu like it was planned to, but, you know, there's no theaters to go to, so it just goes right to Hulu. But everyone's home, so you get more opportunities to see it. And I, I, you know, if you don't have Hulu, get, sign up. It, it's worth a month's worth of being a member of Hulu to see this movie. It's the cost of a movie ticket. I would recommend it. Uh, I think there's a lot of other great things on Hulu too. So you know, much like I'm talking about diversifying your audience, diversify what you see on Hulu too, because there's there's good stuff there. Get but get it for a month. Just see how Palm Springs. It's worth it, definitely. I feel like I've been seeing this over and over and over and over again. It's the leaderboard. Uh, it's leaderboard time. I saw this movie at home, obviously, on streaming with Hulu. Uh, not to be confused with going out to a movie theater, because that does not fly at this moment. You know, this movie, though, Palm Springs, I, I, I had a lot of fun. It's a fun movie. It's enjoyable. Uh, I particularly enjoyed the chemistry that was going on between Andy Samberg and Kristen... Uh, Miliati because that's it that's the ball game like the, the problem with with any movie you make is that you don't know how it's all that there's a chemistry that's involved that you don't know how it's going to turn out until it's all done they they say there's three times that you write a movie when you write the screenplay when you direct or like when you're on set directing people and changing things and when you go to the editing room they had a great writer, they had a great director, they had a great editor. It all worked out well. And in between, all the other pieces, the cinematographer, the gaffer, the sound, the actors, the everything just works out great. And being able to put great actors in the high spots right behind the lead. So we got J.K. Simmons and Peter Gallagher right behind just doing great work as well and getting consummate professionals like that is just going to make the job so much easier whether or not this is going to work and it, it does it just works it, it's not the greatest movie ever i wouldn't say that it is uh, on my list to necessarily be nominated for an oscar like i don't know if it, it, it to me right now there's so few movies to really judge it through but i wouldn't say that it, it is like a runaway favorite to be nominated as like a best picture thing because i don't it's not quite on that level but as far as one's personal enjoyment of it, it's really great. And I I, I, I for sure would give uh, Chris and Miliati uh, some hardware for this one. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what she and Annie Sandberg and, you know, everyone involved in this movie does going forward because it was, it was really great work. But if I have to give it a rating, I would give Palm Springs an 8-1. Again, fun movie, great movie, enjoyable movie. I'm sure that this is going to be one of those ones that's sort of has a longer shelf life. Like maybe it never, you know, it it, it got a nice little uh, push from people when it was released, and people were talking about it, and it was it was one of Hulu's most popular movies ever that they had on their on their platform. But I I still feel like there's a there's going to be a, oh, you never saw this movie aspect of it before. So be one of the people who sees it before somebody says, oh, you didn't see this movie. Because it'll be you'll be all the better for it. Anyway, that's it for me. Uh, I'm going to be doing some new different types of videos coming up here soon. I'm just sort of working out all the details. But I'm still going to be doing these reviews. And I'd like to be able to do more of a focus on the aspiring filmmaker. I, I've been pushing this the last couple weeks. Uh, what would somebody who used to be me, like who the young me who was just thinking about getting into filmmaking, uh, what could I now a couple years into the business, living in Los Angeles, making things happen, say to the younger version of myself to help out? 
and I, I hope that I'm, I'm attracting that sort of audience. If there's somebody that you know who is an aspiring filmmaker, who has made some short films, who's like trying to do more with their life, please send them my way if you think that this would benefit them. But in the meantime, follow me on the social, subscribe to the podcast version if you can't watch the YouTube here, and I will see you next time. Have a wonderful day.